Hello, welcome to a new tutorial. I'm Andre, and in this video I will show you how to create a simple manipulation using stock images in Photoshop. We're gonna create a really simple background and using just uh, two stock images. And then I'm gonna show you how to add some flying jellyfish and how to create basic adjustments using adjustment layers. How to use layer styles, we're gonna use basic layer styles to create light effects and how to create the lighting that you see on the jellyfish here. We're gonna create two layers and then we're gonna combine that with layer styles and create this uh, nice effect that you see on the, on the jellyfish. Uh, at the end, we're gonna use Camera Raw to create the final touch on this uh, manipulation and export our file. I'm using Photoshop CC 2018, but this can be done in Photoshop CS6 as well. Uh, so I hope you will enjoy it and let's get started. Let's start by creating this uh, simple background, uh, well, the simple manipulation uh, with the stock images. So open the stock folder and here inside of uh, this folder called stock, you will find everything that you need to create this manipulation. We will start opening this image. I got it from unsplash.com. We're gonna remove what we have here uh, on the window using Originally I used the pen tool, but maybe you can also do it with the quick selection tool if you select it just like this. And it's a little quicker than using the, the pen tool. So make your selection. With the Alt key you can remove area from areas from your selection. And you can see it's, it's a pretty good selection. Uh, now we're gonna create the, an inverted layer mask. And you can do that pressing Alt and clicking the layer mask icon. This will mask the selection itself, not the outside of the selection. Later on, we will refine the edges of this if, if necessary, but now let's create the background. Let's open the stock folder again, and I'm gonna use this image. You can use other images, I like this one, and it's from unsplash.com as well. And I'm gonna paste it under my window here. Now, uh, you can leave it like this, uh, or you can leave it higher up, but don't put it too high because uh, otherwise it will look like this plane or or vehicle or whatever it's flying close to the ground which is not very realistic. I'm gonna make it smaller so I can see more of, of the sky and I'm gonna leave it there. Just leave those trees sticking out just a little bit and if you zoom in you can see the edge is not perfect we will refine it later on. Well actually let's do it now. I'm gonna right click on this layer mask and I'm gonna choose select and mask Depending on your Photoshop version, you might see this refine edge or refine selection or whatever. I'm going to choose it. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see the edges better. Actually, I'm going to zoom in at 100%. And here I'm going to shift the edge. Minus 20 more or less. Then I'm going to increase the feather. You can see nothing happens until I increase the feather. About 5 or 6 pixels. And then I can see now the edges are too smooth. Uh, even more, about 8 pixels. They're too smooth. Now I have to sharpen them and you can do that using the contrast slider. So increase that quite a lot, about 50 or something like that. And I think that looks great. Now on the output settings I'm gonna choose layer mask and click OK. Now you can see that the edges are now are now a lot better but I trimmed part of the nose as well. So I'm going to select the brush tool with the B key on the keyboard and just use a hard brush, about 76%, and just paint back the nose and then shift the color again and just make sure you preserve that shape over there. Okay, we're done with the background. The next thing we want to do is add those flying jellyfish. Before we add the jellyfish, let's rename these layers. Let's name this one window and this one sky. And now I'm going to open the stock folder again with Control Command O. And these are the jellyfish that I have. I'm going to select all of them or almost all of them and just open them. This will open them on um, separate documents. Uh, you can just click and drag them to your document to create smart objects, uh, but I prefer to do it that way, the, this other way. 
With Control V, I'm gonna paste them. So just open that, Control A, Control X, and Control W. The reason why I cut them and not copy them is uh, when I press Control Command X, I can see it disappearing, and now that confirms that I actually copied that on the clipboard. So X and Control W to close. And this one. And the last two one, I'm gonna leave them there. If I need them, I'm gonna put them here. But maybe with these ones, I have enough. Now I'm gonna disable them one by one. And I'm gonna start with this one. Control T to load the free transform and make them smaller. And just place them around your window. Use different sizes so that you simulate different distances. This will make it a little more realistic. This one, I'm going to make it really small, very far away. This one, I'm going to put it right here, maybe down. And this one, I'm going to make it just a little smaller. I'm going to place it there. I'm going to get this one, which will be the main jellyfish here. And I try not to overlap them too much because we're going to create light effects later and we don't want to have overlapping light effects unless you make them really small like for example this one I'm gonna make it really small and just put it right there okay with control with control click you can see the boundaries of each document and if I click that it will select the layer that belongs to that which is really helpful now we're gonna group everything here I'm gonna select the first one Scroll down, press and hold the shift key, click, and that will select all the layers in between. And I'm gonna press Control Command G uh, to create the group. And I'm gonna name this Jelly. So we have our flying jellyfish. The next thing we wanna do is create some adjustments for the sky layer. Then we're gonna add the lights for the jellyfish and then we'll create the adjustments for the window. So this is the structure of our manipulation. We have the sky, a group containing the jellyfish, and the window. Now we're gonna create the adjustments for the sky. So we have to add these adjustments between this jelly group and the sky. So I'm gonna select the sky, and I'm gonna add a gradient map. This will create the gradient map on top of it. And I created the custom gradient for this. I'm gonna click the color here. This will open the gradient editor and the left color will be black then i'm going to create a new point uh, you, you, when you see this hand here and this uh, when you click you can create new points the location i'm going to set it to eight percent and clicking the color will open the color picker and i'm going to give you the, the code it's 02f4b and next i'm going to add a new point at location 41 <laughs> percent exactly right there and the color code is 146855, this green. And the right color, the white point is ED9D47. I'm gonna click OK, and this is my gradient. Uh, these are the colors that I wanted for my manipulation. That's why I use this custom gradient. I'm gonna click OK now. I'm gonna uh, change the blend mode to color. And I will drop the opacity to 27%. This will uh, make a greenish tone on the sky there. Next, I want more darkness, so I'm going to create a curves adjustment. And instead of giving you each point with the input and output values for each channel, I'm going to give you the preset that I already saved. So what you have to do is click this icon here. This will open this drop-down menu and select load curves preset and here inside the stock folder you will find a file called bg underscore curves dot acv select that open it and you can see all the adjustments well, that i made to this uh, so i had quite a lot of points here that's why it's easier to just give you the preset and i'm gonna uh, leave this at on normal at 100 percent you can see the effect that it creates more darkness and uh, adds even more gray uh, green and blue uh, to this so these are the adjustments that i made to the background next we're going to create the lights 
for this uh, flying jellyfish. We are going to create the light for the jellyfish using two, two layers and layer styles. We're going to start with the first layer which will be created right underneath the jelly group. So I'm going to select that, press Ctrl or Command and click. This will create a new layer under the group. And I'm going to name it Light1. And I'm going to put it on screen. And leave the opacity to 100%. Now we're going to select the brush tool using the B key on the keyboard. We will use a soft brush, so make sure the hardness is set to 0%. And we're going to change the size depending on the size of each jellyfish. We're going to use dark tones for this, and we're going to use blue, uh, yellow tones, or orange like this, and really dark tones like this. We're going to have to change the lightness of it depending on the background. But for example, for this one, you can see it's over a pretty dark background, so we have to use something darker. Because if, if we use something like this, and I click, let me increase the brush, you can see the, the glow is too bright and we still have to add layer styles and another layer of light. This will uh, make the light too bright. So we have to create something darker like this. This is just the base color that will interact with the, other, with the layer style and the, the other layer. So now I'm gonna make the brush about that big and then two clicks bigger, uh, I'm using the keyboard shortcut for that. I customize the uh, size of the brush with the W and the Q key to increase the size, but by default I think it's the bracket or the, uh, I, I, I don't know if it's the bracket key for by default. So just make the brush a little bigger than the, the jellyfish itself. Now I'm gonna make it smaller for this one and with the same color I'm gonna click there. This one I'm gonna make it a little smaller like that there and this one a little bigger. For this one you can see it's pretty bright so what you have to do is just increase slightly the lightness of the color and click there. It's not looking like much but um, we're gonna add more um, more styles. Actually now I'm gonna select the group of the jellyfish and I'm gonna double click on it to open layers the layer styles panel. If you're using an older version of Photoshop and you cannot add layer styles to groups, what you have to do is right click and choose uh, Merge Group. This will merge everything onto a normal layer and you can add the layer style. But since I can do it, I can uh, leave the group as it is and still have the editing capabilities inside the group and just add the layer styles to the group itself. Now, here I'm gonna give you the settings that I have, the layer style that I have. I used um, Inner Glow first, and you can see I have the values here. Uh, I used the color Dodge Blend Mode, and I used this uh, color tone, 91533A. I have the size to 81%, and I have the range to 46. And this creates this um, really, bright light effect. If it's too bright, simply drop the tone a, a little like that and that's it. Then I used outer glow. That's why I said the first layer, uh, light one, should be really dark, should be just very subtle because with this layer styles we're gonna increase the effect uh, quite a lot. So on the outer glow I have again blend mode color dodge and this color tone 6E594B. Again, if it's too strong, just darken it. If it's too dark, just brighten it and you'll light up the uh, thing like that. I will click OK now and uh, you can see the size that I have here, uh, 101 pixels, range 90% and I'm gonna click OK now. Now we need one more light layer. I'm gonna create a new one on top of the jelly group. So one of the layers uh, is on top and one of them underneath and I'm gonna name it light two. This one will be set to color dodge again. And we're gonna set, select the brush tool and with this dark tone we're gonna create lights on top of uh, each jellyfish. So with a soft brush, opacity and flow 100%, just click once there and you can see how it lights that up, which is good. So I'm gonna click here. For this one we need something brighter, so just 
increase the brightness and the saturation of the color and click again and you can see how bright it becomes. Um, this one we need it a little darker because it's on that um, it has that cloud on the on the back well behind it so it's gonna look too bright so just change the tone accordingly like that oh that's too bright let's do it again one click there that one there and the last one over here that's too bright so let's do it again with a darker tone and okay and we're, we're done with the lights you can see the before and after it just adds more light and makes makes them look like they're um, they're on fire or something like that so that's how i added the lights on the jellyfish next we're going to create the adjustments for the window layer so let's go with the adjustments for the window. I, I just made uh, two adjustments. I used the levels adjustment, so let's add a levels adjustment and we're gonna clip it. You can clip it using this icon over here on the properties panel or by pressing alt and clicking between the two layers when you see the cursor changing. And the values that I have here for the levels are 22. Uh, this will increase, you can see we have a lack of shadows here. You can see this gap on the shadows uh, histogram. The midtones I left it to 1 and the shadows I uh, moved it to 235. Uh, this will increase the contrast on the image. You can see how it looks before and this is how it looks after. Next I added a gradient map. So I add a gradient map adjustment layer. And again I'm going to clip this um, here. You can use custom colors for this but um, because we already have the background have this with this color we can actually duplicate that. So we have this gradient map here for the background. I can uh, press Control J or Command J on a Mac and just drag it up here on the layers. I put it on top and just clip it. And this will uh, create the same um, effect as on the background. I will just increase the opacity to let's say 50% or something like that. We I just want to have more color as you can see there. And that's how I adjust the background. If you want to have different colors, you can uh, add a hue saturation, also clip and just change the hue and have different uh, tones and maybe just drop the saturation a little um, or the or the opacity, sorry, of, these, uh, of this adjustment. But with that uh, gradient map, it's enough for me. So uh, this is the adjustment for the background, really simple. And um, I'm going to leave it here. Uh, next, we're going to create the final adjustment using uh, Camera Raw. On the last part of this tutorial, we're going to create the final, the final adjustments, the final color uh, tones. And I created two color lookups. And if you don't have Photoshop CC, you will not be able to do this, so you'll have to skip it. Um, but I'm going to add two color lookups. One with uh, the adjustment drop blues. So just open this top drop down and type drop blues. And this is the effect that you get. I will leave the blend mode to normal and I'm going to drop the opacity to 65%. Now I'm going to add a second color lookup. And this time I'm going to use the foggy night preset from the same drop down list. Just open it and press F0 and this will select the foggy night. And I'm gonna drop the opacity of this to 28% and the blend mode will set to normal as well. And we're done with this adjustment. You can see the effect that we get. Next, I'm gonna uh, just select the top layer, create a new one and press Shift Alt Control E or Shift Option Command E on a Mac, this will uh, create a stamp, basically will merge all layers onto this new layer. It's just like uh, creating a screenshot and pasting it on top. And now we're going to use the camera raw filter. Uh, if you go to filter, you should see camera raw here if you have Photoshop CC. If you have Photoshop CS6 or a previous version, you will not see it here. So what you'll have to do is uh, either copy this image on, on a new document and save it as a TIFF file or using the same document, you can go to file save as and from the Photoshop, well, from the, on the format drop down, use TIFF here, uncheck layers, uh, that 
if you leave it checked it will you'll have a really big document and it's not uh, necessary just uncheck layers give it a name maybe well I'll give it whatever name you want save it and then open that tiff file back in photoshop and by default it should open it in camera raw because tiff files are raw format uh, so it should open it in camera raw and inside of here um, you can make any changes you want i'm going to give you a preset that i saved and you can open that preset and then just uh, change the settings if you want to click this icon over here depending on the camera raw version version that you have this menu might be somewhere else uh, but in my case it's right here and just choose load settings and here inside the stock folder you will find this file called jelly underscore final dot xmp uh, this file contains all the tweaks that i have here all the settings that i have on the camera raw so just click load and you can see the change that it does um, it's not looking as the original because well i have different uh, settings different light settings so uh, that's why i said you have to change this and uh, give it your own uh, touch uh, i'm gonna probably leave this to about here um, a lot of the changes in color are made here on the camera calibration so uh, maybe you want to touch this and make the changes here and then go back to the basic module and just tweak the tint the temperature um, here on the hsl you can also make changes or here on the split toning you can uh, saturate highlights and and shadows using different tones uh, but i'm gonna leave it like this and i'm just gonna click ok and you'll see the before and after camera raw before camera raw and after basically i increase the contrast and just uh, change a bit the colors as a final step you can create a new layer on top on screen and add some glows if you want that if you liked uh, if you like to add glows of light using a dark tone and a soft brush uh, you can add glows of light it's too bright so let's use a, an even darker tone and a little more saturated Oops, that's too dark and too saturated. So you have to change the tones here and uh, try different colors. Um, maybe let's stick with this sort of green, but really dark. And just add glows of light like that. And this will maybe... Uh, if you want to change the overall color, you can press Ctrl Command U and try different hues um, until you get something that you like. Maybe even saturate things or make them... Uh, darker if you if it's too strong so we can control the overall look of this uh, with the hue saturation adjustment um, so this is the end result uh, maybe these glows are a bit too too bright let's darken them just a little and saturate things just a little bit as well i don't know these colors don't look bad so i'm gonna leave it like this and this is my final result this is the uh, end result of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any problems, if you have any, have any questions regarding any of the techniques that I used or uh, any of the steps, just post a comment and I'll be glad to help you. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next tutorial.